Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Richard Wilson from Shorebird. Uh, I'd like to welcome you all to today's uh, webinar. Um, we've actually started to take a, a different approach to uh, webinars just to see uh, and, and try to get further engagement rather than it just be on the day. So I'd like to welcome you to um, a conversation um, series that uh, Michael's doing. The idea behind this now is to enable you to be able to access the recording and then ask questions at any point. Uh, so even if it's a, a week or two or a month after the actual recording, that you still have the ability to uh, tap into the knowledge of our guests, such as Sarah, and uh, and then obviously you can get questions asked uh, and answered that particular way. Um, so hence the reason why we're doing it in this different format. Um, so um, obviously today's uh, conversation is with Sarah Harvey, Michael uh, Millward, who's a regular presenter on our on our series, um, has arranged this. So without any further delay, I shall pass you over to Michael uh, for today's conversation. Thank you very much, Richard. Uh, thank you for the introduction and good afternoon. And hello to Sarah Harvey. Can you hear me, uh, Sarah? Hello, Michael. Yes, I can yes. hear you loud and clear. Good, good. You're way down south, and uh, we're up here in Leeds. So um, if we are, we're operating across the technology of the internet, mm -hmm. and um, so hopefully it will not let us down. Um, just to reiterate what uh, Richard said, if you have, as you're listening to this, any questions, you can enter them into the chat box, which should be on the left-hand side of your screen, and um, we will either arrange uh, for your answers, your questions to be answered um, if you are doing that as part of the live recording. And uh, if it's later on, we will get back to you as soon as possible, or rather Sarah will get back to you as soon as possible as she is the, the font of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And like she said, we are starting a conversation with a savvy conversation. But, Indeed. Uh, this is good. So just to, um, for those of you, I know a lot of people that listen to the webinars that I do know me and have uh, learned a little bit about me, but um, just for the new people, I've produced this one slide which um, I think the technical term is infographic. That's a little cartoon of me on the right-hand side. You can see my whole career there. I started in HR in 1981 and started off in Yorkshire, joined the, what was called the CIPD, or actually it was called the IPM at the time. It's now the CIPD, and you can see the different logos that we've been involved with. Went from Yorkshire all around the world and came back into the UK, um, formed my own business, uh, after working in all sorts of different types of organizations and got involved with all sorts of different uh, um, aspects of the profession, including the CIPD, the ILM, the CMI, all sorts of things. Done a lot of things with the BBC, with Bloomberg, and I am the HR person that created the uh, only business-to-business -business product that the Simpsons have ever accredited, and that's a, health, a range of health and safety education resources featuring the world's most famous and yet the world's least competent health and safety manager. And then my company is called Abbasida, and you can see some of our products on on the uh, left-hand side. If you want to find out anything else about me, uh, contact details uh, will be at the end of the presentation as well. But that's enough about me. Sarah, tell me about yourself. How do we know each other? Oh, we know each other, um, Michael, through, of course, the CIPD. So yeah. I'm currently chair of um, Sussex branch. Um, been, mm -hmm. been doing that for three years. And previously I was in South East London, so I was also chair there for... Uh, four years, I think it was. So mm. I've been involved for a, a while on the CIPD front. Um, and day job wise, um, I suppose just briefly to say that my background is in generalist HR and OD. So over 20 years of uh, leading teams and working with organisations. Um, and I went uh, freelance in 2003. Um, so I've been doing that for quite some time now, doing lots of different things. But um, importantly for this conversation, I guess, is that two years ago, almost exactly two years ago, um, I started to focus in on savvy conversations and um, through lots of work with working with teams that weren't performing properly, that weren't getting on properly, um, having lots of conflict um, or perhaps not in conflict, but that they were um, just not working to their best of their ability. Um, I came up with the, the concept of Savvy Conversations, okay. which we'll hear more about later. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so very soon, actually. So tell me a little bit about what a Savvy Conversation is. Yes. So um, to start with, um, if I just outline um, what I call the concept, the underpinning theory and the practical application. 
Um, so this, it all starts really with this um, central concept of um, every conversation that we have needing to get results on the one hand and on the other hand to maintain relationships with people. Um, so we can see that, you know, very often we manage to do one or the other um, we might manage to do both to a point, but a lot of a lot of the time there's a bit of uh, compromise involved. So the the central concept is certainly about getting the results and maintaining that that, that relationship um, and balancing that uh, that all of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what kind of goes with that to help people to understand how they might actually manage to do that is um, what I'm sort of calling the underpinning theory, which is the street part of the street creds model. And um, so the street part um, really talks about some of the um, psychological principles um, in a very practical way. Um, but, you know, the fact that it's founded on some real solid um, general either personal or organisational um, psychology really um, and the practical the very practical part of it is the creds model which is, um, is the way that I've pulled together all of the experience and all of the research that I've done about what makes a conversation a good conversation and it's a really practical tool that you can use in the moment to, uh, to make sure you're savvy. Cool. I'm so, it's my little phrase when I get excited about things. I go like, "Oh, cool!" Cool. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's good. It is. Yeah, but it is. But it's so like it's actually just within what you've been saying. There's a lot more to it than just simply talking to people, isn't there? So like, and it gets me into this idea of like, what's the difference between what does savvy actually mean? Absolutely. Yeah. I. I, I mean, I purposely called. Um, the whole thing, savvy conversations, because I was getting a little bit fed up, to be honest, with people keep talking about, oh, let's have, you know, we've got to have a difficult conversation, or it's really crucial, and and, and it sort of seems to set people up almost to uh, be nervous about it and to worry about it. So if we have a look at just the definition of what savvy actually is, it kind of spins it on its head a bit. So it's saying, Mm -hmm. well, what we want to do is we want to know or understand how to have that um, conversation we need to we need to do that in the best in the best possible way um, mm-hmm. and it, to, to be savvy is simply to know or, or, or to understand something right okay so um, yeah, understa- uh, yeah carry on sorry no I was just gonna say like it's like understanding every aspect of it and very often I think this next point that you got was like um, we understand everything from our perspective Right, but we don't necessarily understand the other person's perspective. So it's like this thing that you're saying about being well informed. Absolutely, and being perceptive about yeah. what's going on in the conversation. Um, for me, uh, if I'm having that conversation, but also for you, if you're in the conversation with me. So um, yeah, having that kind of uh, it's about our you know our internal perception and our external perception and then if we sort of follow on the definition uh, you know it just builds on that really in terms of being kind of shrewd knowledgeable having that sort of proficient um, way of having the conversation that you need to have and and very simply um, just being clued up really Mm -hmm. Um, so you know quite a nice definition I think it is. It's, and, and people that have listened to the webinars that I've done in the past will just like know that I do go on a little bit about the importance of managers and employers and, and HR people understanding the people that they're dealing with. Don't look at the world from your their world from your perspective. With the old mm-hmm. um, saying that well, don't uh, judge somebody until you've walked in their moccasins uh, for five mm-hmm. years or, or something. It's like it's it's. But I've never expressed it in that very succinct way that you've got there. It's like. Uh, yeah, the shrewd and knowledgeable bit. Shrewd is a is a difficult thing, I suppose, for uh, um, to actually get your head around. Are you being shrewd about it, or are you just like going with what you can see, or are you thinking about it underneath and and all the various different things that go with that? So that's the the savvy bit. The conversation, obviously, is to talk like we're doing now. But uh... exactly, exactly. Uh, but I, in many ways, um, Michael, I think that the conversation part of the definition is what's more interesting because of course it's uh, it's to talk and that's what we sort of tend to understand about um you know what a conversation is but i think if we think about some of the 
particularly workplace conversations that we might have. How often in those conversations are we having um, a good exchange of, um, you know, real thoughts, opinions and feelings uh, and doing that in the right way? I've gone on. Um, yeah. I touched things a little bit too quickly <laughs> there. I'm very sorry. Nobody better noticed that. Nobody noticed that, though, did they? No, <laughs> we've gone away with that. <laughs> um, yeah. True. So just just back to that. You know, that the, the really kind of what's the what's the appropriate level of sharing of feelings about something that's that, that you're discussing? Uh, am I am I uh, confident enough to share my opinion with you because of either you know what position you hold or because of how you're actually talking and listening? Listening to me, uh, and sometimes I think that you know, if we just take the simple example of an appraisal, how often is a, an appraisal about talking? The manager usually talking to the individual, the individual not really engaging as much as uh, we might like them to, rather than that true spoken exchange of thoughts, opinions, and feelings. Yeah, it's, but the listening part is as important as the as the talking part, and it's Absolutely. not just listen, not just listening with your ears, but listening with your eyes as well. I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, what's in it for me? Tell so, me I, yeah, thing. good. So, I've got ten things, and perhaps if we just go through these quite briefly, yep. really, um, that where I found that savvy conversations can actually um, help help yep. people. So, so the first thing naturally would be about avoiding conflict, um, and yep. actually, I, I've I've said that I focus obviously on workplace um, setting, but yep. it actually applies um, outside the workplace too, um, which mm. is quite interesting. Um, planning planning for those important conversations. So if you know they're yep. coming up, how can you use it to plan, to reflect on our, our own behaviour? Obviously, improving our self-awareness is um, always going to make us be able to have that conversation in a more aware and uh, impactful yep. way. Um, yep. Definitely in terms of giving more effective and meaningful feedback. So quite often we hear, I'm going to use the polite version that I often hear, um, the feedback sandwich, um, yes. which, which many of us have been taught to do. I really uh, am completely against that. And I would suggest that people um, instead use the CREDS model, which we'll come on to, to give, okay. the, uh, to give the effective feedback. Um, yeah, carrying out any one-to-ones at all um, and making those... Um, more effective. Um, so uh, is that when you talk yep. about a one-to-one, -one, I mean, people do think a one-to-one -one is a conversation, um, but uh, when you're talking to your team, it's slightly different. It, but the same principles that you're talking about is about understanding the people, understanding what potential reactions are likely to be. The same principles apply to a, a one-to-many as to a one-to-one -one with a savvy conversation. Is that right? Absolutely true. Yeah, absolutely true. So it works very well in a team setting, although, we, yeah, I tend to focus just for people's learning. It's easier to sort of think of it on a one-to-one, -one, but you're absolutely right to point out it would yeah. work in a group yeah, because if you have a team of four people, for example, you need a different management style, different conversational style with, with each one of those four people, right. but then a different, a different style again when you've got a group of or any part of those four people together and you, you're talking to them as a group. It's, it's the group dynamics as, as much as this, like what you say, understanding the individual, understanding the group and understanding how they're likely to perceive what it is you're about to say to them. Absolutely right. Yeah. So you can't just give yourself a tick box. I've done that. I've done that. Can you? Because it would mm -hmm. be different for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay so, yeah. Um, sorry, carry on, Michael. I keep interrupting. Yeah, you mentioned. No, no, no. It's, it's your, well, I'm having the conversation with you. But you've already mentioned about the performance appraisals. Um, and we are summarizing, I suppose, this idea that it's about getting the best from yourself and your teams by understanding the situations and the people and the messages that need to be yeah. uh, presented to them, or actually the messages that you need to get them to give to you. Because it's not, uh, I'm getting the feeling it's not just about you talking as a manager to your staff, but the conversation is two-way, and you also have to be receptive to what they have to say as well. It's, Absolutely. It's, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and engaging it, them in that conversation in the way that works for them and works for you. Right, great. Mm. So it's differences of opinions. Um, I think we've all had this type of experience where we look back on it and we can think like, if only I'd done that differently, we would have got more of agreement or we wouldn't have had the argument, we would have had the discussion yeah. instead, this sort of thing. Absolutely. Right. Okay. And a savvy conversation should lead to a more effective relationship longer term. Um, 
rather than a problem coming out of a conversation that you've had with someone. Yes, and but the only other thing I would add on, on that is to say that um, remembering that uh, it could be a series of conversations and not just one conversation, and that's how we develop the effective relationships. Yeah. Uh, yep, yep, mm -hmm. I appreciate that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then get results you want and maintain better working relationships, which is like the multiple conversations that you're talking about, the understanding of the person, getting to know them, them getting to know you. It's all, it's, it's, it's almost like, yeah, you're talking about it in a work context because we're HR people, that's, mm. but it works in families. Um, it should work in with anyone that you meet in any type of environment if you just simply put yourself in their shoes, I suppose. It should, exactly. And I've worked with some in, um, people, for instance, in the uh, hospitality industry where they found it really useful to think of it in relation to dealing with customers and, and, and guests as well, so... Uh, um, well, you see, yeah. there, that's the big growth in many areas, isn't it? The customer mm. services, like understanding your customer and their perception of what you've done um, can be the difference between whether you're buying, best buying from you or not. You know, but you mentioned about this um, difficult conversations at the beginning there. And I suppose for a lot of people, um, a lot of this uh, work that's been done in this area has been focused on, you know, or you're going to have a difficult conversation, very much on the negative, and yet yeah. you seem to be coming at it from a you know, 180 degree different angle. Well, yeah, I mean, who wants to be told, come on, we need to go and have a difficult conversation, you, you know, as the, man <laughs> as the manager or as the recipient or whatever you want to call it, that's not a good starting point, is it? So no, I think, yeah, no. you're just simply just thinking about what's the right conversation we should be having, um, how can I have it in the right way? And also, of course, is it the right time for this particular conversation? So that, I think, summarises really well what makes it savvy rather than uh, too difficult. Having said that, of course, what I'm not saying is, oh, it's a magic wand and it suddenly makes these sensitive things really easy to talk about. It, it doesn't at all. But um, we can certainly make our lives a lot easier and get better results. I would agree with you to a large extent. And obviously you are the expert in savvy conversations, but I'm already starting to get the feeling that, um, you know, if I, if I I was looking at a situation that I've got to deal with and it's going to be a difficult conversation with my old pre this conversation mindset. But now I'm learning about, you know, if I plan things, if I look at it from their perspective, if I work out the things that I'm likely to want to say and the things that I definitely don't want to say, it is going to be easier because I will have thought the, the process is through from a yes. positive aspect, a positive perspective rather than, oh, this is going to be a difficult conversation. This person's going to start shouting and swearing at me and all this sort of stuff because... That's very true, yeah. yeah. I've not looked at it from their perspective. It's mm. just like, I'm starting, to, I'm starting to like this, Sarah, you know? Good I'm stuff. Like, I'm but pleased. I'm interested in all of this street cred bit because I am yes. you know, very street cred, but it ain't what you do, it's the way that you do it, and that's <laughs> what gets results. I always like a good reference to an 80s hit. Oh, you can't What's all it. this about? <laughs> What's all this about? Well, you know, just simply that, you know, I really believe that, that that's true, that we sometimes focus very much on um, the process, what we're doing, and particularly in HR, we're guilty of this. You know, what are we doing? What process are we putting in to help people have conversations? Um, and actually, that is, to a large extent, I think, uh, irrelevant. It's about the way you have the conversation that, that makes the difference. So, you know, that's not to say that all the great work that people do, uh, and, and look, there's lots of talk at the moment about having those kind of conversations in a different way and putting different processes in, but I think they focus too much on the what and not enough on the how. Um, so what I've tried to do is really give a very simple but effective model to um, help people with the how. Um, it'd be no surprise to you, Sarah, that I really like simple and effective. So <laughs> Good. let's start. Tell me a little bit more about how street cred can be simple and effective. Okay, well, if we just, and I, you know, and I say this slightly tongue in cheek, really, but, you know, um, the, I've used the street cred um, uh, acronym, if you like, um, to just kind of pick out this really important element of credibility. The fact that, of course, how can you possibly have a difficult, sensitive, um, whatever you want to call it, conversation with somebody if you have no credibility. So it's all got to start from that point, really, of, um, you know, what, 
what respect do you have? Have you built, have you built up the relationship with this person to be able to um, kind of be trusted and for them to know that you're you're credible enough to have the conversation? You know, so some people might call it authenticity. Um, you know, mm-hmm. that whole kind of area of being able to be believed uh, and to be credible. So that's really why I chose the street creds um, okay. as, as a name. Yeah. Sorry, again, I've sort of flicked through to the slides, yeah. but the, this is, um, I'm just very, I'm getting very enthusiastic, but um, the street, you've sort of broken it down as to what each one of the letters means in, in this sort of context. So safety, we, we can feel unsafe under attack or criticised. I think actually mm-hmm. every single one of us has been in a conversation where we've supposed to be the one in control and, and actually felt very unsafe about it as well. Yeah, and how can you possibly, um, you know, have say feel feel safe, um, and uh, and what goes with that is obviously the second point around trust. If we if we if we don't make the conversation safe for somebody, they're not going to be honest. They're not going to be able to open up about whatever it is that they need to uh, talk about. And what goes with that is they're not going to be able to trust you. And if we don't trust and have safety, then we're probably not talking about the right stuff. Um, and we're probably not engaging enough in, in the things that we should be talking about. So that's really two key underpinning theories, really. Is it also important that you trust yourself to have the conversation? Yeah, I guess it is really. It, it, it really is. And to have that, um, again, that goes back to the definition of savvy, doesn't it? How, have I got the practical know-how to trust myself to have that? So, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Right. Okay. And then the reasons. Why do I want to have this conversation? Do I know what I want to achieve? Um, yeah, I, I can see from what you've been saying how that would be important, that they um, don't waste words, don't have the conversation you don't need to have. Um, but it's also, I suppose, what do they want to achieve from it as well? What do they want to achieve? And also, are you really being honest with yourself as to what you want to achieve? I think sometimes we want to prove we're right (laughs) rather than actually um, something that we should be focusing on in terms of an outcome or whatever, that actually maybe we've got hurt feelings about something. So our reason is we want to kind of get back at people. And if, if we don't think about that, in advance, then um, we may be not honest with ourselves about that. Yeah, yeah. there's almost like there's a, one of the, the potential risks is that a conversation gets competitive. It and definitely to, does. Yeah. yeah, there has to be a winner come out of it in mm. some sort of way, and, and that's actually where you go from having a savvy conversation to having a difficult conversation. Yeah, that's absolutely you, right. Yeah, and you actually you create the difficulty in the conversation yourself because you've got the wrong attitude going into it. Yeah, it's so true. And then, of course, it, that ties into the emotions of it as well, because then if, if I start to think, well, are you just trying to win or make me look bad, then uh, how am I going to feel about that? How, what emotions is that going to evoke in me? So um, that's absolutely right. You can see how it's all connected. Yeah. And what type of relationship are we going to have after this, um, this conversation? It's, it's, it, there has to be a win-win type of situation. I remember like, working in Asia, one of the things that you learn very quickly is that there is very, in a conversation, there is very rarely it's like a winner or a right or wrong answer. Mm-hmm. There is just like somebody will sort of give you the impression, yes, you are right, but I'm also right. We've just yes. got different perspectives. Exactly. Whereas over here in, in, in Europe, it's like we are very much more um, winner and loser competitive about, mm-hmm. you know, I am right. I have to prove that somebody else is wrong um, type of situation. Mm-hmm. Right. And then this this truth. Truth you mentioned quite a lot during this, really, don't you? Yeah, and I think that's one of the things that I've become really interested in as I've done um, more and more research into into all of this is, is that whole what is the real conversation that we should be having? Because quite often I think there's a lot of talk, going back to the definition, there's a lot of things said. Um, is it actually what we should be talking about? Or are we too frightened to say what it really is that, um, it, you know, we should be discussing? Um, you know, the elephant in the room, if you like. It's that It's yeah. that picks up that angle. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listening to you talk about this, one of the things that comes to my mind is like that hierarchy of needs, motivational theory thing. Oh. Like, I can almost map the street um, acronym against those um, you know, the acronyms for the, or the different levels of the hierarchy of needs. I can see it very clearly. You know, you start off needing to feel safe, and then you reach a level where you're actually getting the self-actualization. And if you think, I'm thinking about it almost in those sort of terms of what mm. is motivating 
the conversation and how do we reach a one something where everybody reaches their um, level of self actualization mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. Plus, well i'm uh, feeling very street yes, I am. Excellent. feeling well, very street let's, let's do the cred let's do the cred <laughs> <laughs> right talk me through this because this looks really interesting so shall I start? I think I'll start with the cogs and um, because okay. that, that that's the visual that um, I think is really helpful um, here. Mm-hmm. So so the creds, if you imagine them all as cogs that are kind of going around the middle cog, which is the conversation and, and, ha- and having that exchange in the middle. Um, and so, again, I'm just um, on the on the left hand side there. You can see the reminder of that definition of what, what does it mean to be credible um, and to be believed and to have that trust and respect and and what have you um and again just reiterating that um, you know in order to have that credibility it is about what you do and how you do it and what you say and mm-hmm. how you say it um so yeah so the creds really um what what we need to think about is um having all of those creds uh sorry those cogs going round in the conversation um so that all five of those things need to be present and probably it's a good idea if we sort of um pack uh, unpick what the um the each of the areas are uh, and then that will probably okay. make more sense to people i guess okay there we go oops I am very, I'm very sort of like enthusiastic yeah, trigger on the happy. Button today. Yeah, I am. Right. So, so yeah, uh, the creds. Um, so the first one, and these are in no obviously particular order, other than they spell creds. Um, right. So, so uh, the first um, one is to be candid. So, in, in the conversations that we're having, to make sure that we're we're being truthful, that we're saying what we need to say and especially when it's something difficult or sensitive that we're being honest about that but obviously I'm sure Michael you can think of um, people that are highly candid um, and actually that can come across quite rude can't it? Um, um, Sarah I'm, I'm from Yorkshire I'm used to people saying <laughs> it like it is. <laughs> Well, that's a really good point, actually. Perhaps we can come back to that because that is absolutely um, pertinent to the fact that, of course, we're all different. And some of us um, are quite happy with a high degree of candidness and others, actually, we need a lot more sensitivity. Um, and right. so it's really good for us to kind of acknowledge no, that regardless of what our own preferences are, other people might not have the same, the same <laughs> Yorkshire preferences. <laughs> Maybe it's a good idea if we just move on. Yeah, let's okay. yeah, move on. <laughs> Um, so, as I was saying, so, can, so candidness has to be there, um, but of course that needs to come with a bit of respectfulness. And um, yeah, I think we all know what it feels like to be respectful and be respected. Um, so we need to deliver our message in that respectful way. Um, so if I just c- okay. come on to the engaging, um, obviously what we want to do is not have a one way Um, conversation that wouldn't really be a conversation as we now know Um, so we need to engage people in in the conversation and you'll be interested to see Michael there even says can you be charming Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) I always am Sarah (laughs) absolutely Um, so so we're engaging we're having a two-way conversation even when someone doesn't really want to have that conversation with us we are working hard to engage them in it Um, So direction. I found it takes a yeah. it takes a lot of energy to ignore someone. Actually, uh, it's a lot easier yeah. to engage with somebody than to ignore them. But uh, yeah, I interrupted there for a moment. So, the direction. No, that's okay. So direction. Yeah. Um, quite often, what managers um, tell me is um, that you know sometimes people throw in the kind of uh, curveballs or whatever to the conversation. So they start off with good intentions, but actually by the end of the conversation, it's been, um, it's gone in a different direction entirely and they've forgotten what they wanted to get out of it. So um, the direction is actually really important to keep in mind. And just finally, obviously we want to do all of that with the right level of sensitivity. So, uh, and by that, I mean uh, sensitive to the person so the sort of internal sensitivity, sensitive to the person and what's going on for them at the moment and how are you seeing them reacting in the moment? And also, of course, those external influences. Is this the right time? Is this the right place um, and the right circumstances to be having the conversation? So as I was saying before, what we want to do is get all five of those things, if we think of those yep. as cogs. So all five what of you mean is... Yeah. yeah. 
I've set myself a little challenge here. What oh, we um, need to do is get what we need to do is get all five creds cogs must be present to the conversation to be savvy. Absolutely. Round of applause for Michael. Yes, a bit well of a done. tongue twister there. Yes, Thank you. <laughs> Um, good, I'm not going to try and say that again then. So, um, <laughs> but yes, absolutely right. So what we need, what what I have shown, I think I've now worked with at least a thousand people on this mm -hmm. mod model, um, and um, without fail, we've definitely demonstrated that all five of those cogs need to be present for the conversation to um, be savvy. So remember, it's about getting results and maintaining the relationship. So if you can think if you took away uh, the candid cog uh, and you would you did all those other things really well but you weren't candid you haven't talked about the thing that you wanted to to talk about in an honest way um, and you could repeat that around the um, the diagram and to take out one er element and um, I'm pretty confident that what we would find is if we took one of those out either we'd compromise on the result that we were after or we would damage the relationship in some way, either permanently or temporarily. Okay. So that's quite so big stuff, is a, Yeah, but it's, it's an all or nothing type of thing is what you're saying. It has to be all five, or there's no point really in having the conversation in a savvy way. Which is the one that most peop, most, is most often left out? Good question. Yeah. Well, well it, it is actually different. As you said earlier, we're all different and we're all kind of because of our experiences and maybe the culture that we're used to or all sorts of things, we'll have our own preferences. Um, but what I found certainly in the UK is that um, the candidness is what most people tend to struggle with. So mm -hmm. particularly where it's something that's quite personal. Um, that they're sort of okay with the the other four, but often when when we need to, and I use the terminology turning up the volume on the cog or turning it down. So when we need to turn the volume up on a conversation and make it more more candid, for instance, maybe because uh, we've already had this conversation twice and we haven't had the result we wanted. Maybe the person hasn't done what it was that we were asking or whatever the situation might be we might need to turn that candidness up and I think that's what I seem to find most people um seem to struggle more with or that it's not okay. perhaps it's not their comfort zone and that's not surprising is it because mostly we want to maintain relationships with people most yeah. of us want to focus on being respectful and um sensitive and um which which lends itself to the maintaining relationships rather than maybe yeah. the candid and direction, which is about results. But I'm thinking as well, I know that there are lots of people who will sort of quote to me what they are on some particular management or model and how they fit in with team roles or change agents and all sorts of different things like that. And I suppose um, they they do that because they understand what their strengths and weaknesses are and want want to play to those strengths in a situation so they tell people what those strengths are yeah. Yeah. in this situation with a, a savvy conversation what we're talking about is our awareness of our strengths our weaknesses our preferred um, styles or um, approaches to things can help us to eliminate the problems that we might have um, with one of those areas that we are um, less proficient in and may also make it possible for the person that we want to talk to to make it easier for us to deal with that mm. area where we're not particularly um, uh, proficient. So actually, if candid, we need to be candid with ourselves before we can be candid mm. with somebody else in this situation. Uh, absolutely, all... yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's absolutely yeah. right. And I and I think what the way to look at this um, model, I think, is as a, if you like, a situational model so that it's adaptable it's about having something uh, sort of a ready reckoner in your mind if you like that uh, either planning for a conversation or in the middle of the conversation or even reflecting afterwards about what happened in the conversation we can really use it to kind of think oh did I have the volume right there did I get the volume yeah. right on each of those cogs all the way through or could I have um, either cl shut down the volume or, or, or made it louder on, on one area to get a better result and maintain the relationship. It does, even just from this conversation that I'm having with you today, and I know that we've talked very briefly beforehand about about it all, but I'm really I'm getting a picture of um, where we are 
well, where I am actually in some of the conversations that I've had um, with people even recently, even today, where I'm sort of thinking like, actually, did I get my point across in, in that conversation? And, and then mm-hmm. just going through these, these five creds, it, it's like, well, actually, uh, I did let them distract me from that a little bit. Right. And I, right. I did let them do this, that, or the other. It's, yes. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, I've had a learning experience today. Excellent. Sarah. I'm loving Thank it. You very, <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure. I would it, um, like here are Sarah's contact details for anyone else who wants to have a, a learning experience or um, so I build up their uh, con, you know, their their savvy conversational bits. Um, there's my contact details if you want to find out more about what I've learned today. But um, um, we'll leave Sarah's uh, slide details up so people can uh, um, con- write those down if they want to contact Sarah. So, Sarah, I am really very, very grateful for your time today. Um, I have, like I say, being perfectly candid, learned an <laughs> awful lot from this. So thank you very much. I'm going to hand back over to Richard. You. You're very welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm going to back hand it back to Richard, who's now going to sort of manage your questions that people have been putting in. And um, I look forward to seeing you at the next CIPD event. You will. Have a great day, Sarah. Thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Hi Sarah, thank you very much for today. Hi. Sarah, it's obviously it's, uh, it's been as Michael's just said as well. It's uh, even sitting here, just sort of listening. It's uh, it's very insightful as well. So uh, you know, just sitting in the back, you always that's learn something good. as well. I'm always happy to talk about being savvy, so uh, that that's good. <laughs> Well, hopefully, obviously, during this, during this recording, people will be asking questions in the chat box. Uh, but obviously now, for everybody that uh, has and is viewing this recording uh, after the event, please do use the chat box as part of the facility. The questions do go through uh, to Sarah, so that then she'll be able to uh, sort of answer those. Uh, do link in with Sarah as well, so you can approach her directly. And, uh, and obviously, you've got all the contact details there if you do want to ask any questions. Um, so uh, basically, uh, as always, all that's ever left for me to do at the end of one of these events <laughs> is obviously thank you all for your time and thank and thank you, Sarah, again. Um, thank you for all. Hope you've learned something more as we, as we all have, and uh, we look forward to uh, welcoming welcoming you to uh, future uh, recordings. Thank you. Thank you.